Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Dan Meyer. I'm the editor-in-chief of RCR Wireless News. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today I am joined by Tom Nato, who's the uh, chief architect of open source software at Brocade. Uh, Tom, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Great. Well, uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about a new product you guys have coming out, but uh, let's start off with, I guess, maybe for those who don't know about your company, maybe a quick overview of, of Brocade and what you guys do and how you, pr how you kind of play in the telecom space. Um, yeah, Brocade is a, is a kind of a you know, traditional networking company, network hardware company. Um, we sell uh, switches, routers, um, and uh, network storage. Um, more recently, uh, Brocade has gotten also gotten into um, virtualization, virtualized appliances, uh, first with the acquisition of uh, Viata uh, and the virtual router. Uh, product there, and uh, also um, around that time, uh, I think we came out with the virtual ADX, which is the virtual firewall product. Um, and then, of course, uh, early this year, um, I came in and uh, started working on the uh, Open Daylight controller, uh, base controller that uh, we announced uh, this morning. Great, great. Well, obviously, virtualization is uh, is one of those markets that uh, is definitely growing. It seems like across telecom, so. Uh, you guys are definitely in there at, at a good time, yeah. it seems like. Well, let's talk a bit about the new product. So the, the Vata Controller, it's, it's an SDN product. Uh, maybe give a little bit of, I guess, background and, and kind of what the, what the product is and how it, uh, how it uh, is used or how, how it will be used in the telecom space. Um, yeah, so the controller uh, um, embodies sort of uh, uh, the canonical thinking around what an SDN controller is. Uh, and by canonical thinking, I mean um, it's not narrowly defined by one southbound protocol like OpenFlow. Uh, it does, or it speaks a variety of, of southbound protocols, uh, including OpenFlow, um, BGP, OSPF, ISIS, PCP, uh, NetConf, and so on. Um, and then uh, the controller exposes a variety of, of um, northbound models northbound to applications so then they can consume those models and manipulate them. Um, and those models are, are defined using uh, the uh, Yang uh, language, which was originally defined to work with NetConf. And, um, uh, and then applications are built around that in the uh, services that are uh, uh, included in the controller. Got it. Well, it does seem like, you know, this controller aspect of it is... Uh, a pretty important piece of the, of the, of the product. So again, there's so much information going back and forth here that uh, it seems like there's got to be some way to kind of, uh, you know, manage this aspect of it. I mean, virtualization is opening up so many, uh, it seems like, so many opportunities that, uh, uh, you know, that's, that seems to be the, the challenge right now is kind of uh, managing uh, all this opportunity out there. Is that, that's, is, that, is that what kind of what you guys are targeting with, with this product? Yeah, there's, I, I mean, the, the controller itself um, is designed to, to sort of manage and operate uh, large networks uh, on a large scale. Um, the controller comes with um, uh, very high-end uh, clustering uh, and back-end synchronization uh, capabilities um, using uh, the ACA framework, uh, which is a popular open source uh, framework for that. Um, and, it, and it is designed for sort of high, hyperscale uh, size use. Got it. Got it. And, and then I guess who are you guys targeting specifically with this with this product? So we're actually targeting uh, several different markets with the product. Uh, obviously, you know, zero, sort of tier one telco size deployments um, are, are the number one target right now. Um, but we're also targeting uh, CSPs, uh, large enterprises, uh, eventually that are uh, sort of into the same sort of you know mega sized data center. Uh, deployments, uh, and then I think over time uh, we'll be refining the product into smaller packaging, mm -hmm. uh, so that it, it will work with you know sort of uh, smaller and uh, smaller enterprises and, and whatnot. Got it. Good. Okay, makes sense. Now, uh, I guess you know there's been quite a bit of talk you know over the past few months, 18 months or so, uh, kind of about the whole SDN market, NFV, uh, <clears throat> this kind of virtualization space. Uh, and some com companies I've talked to, you know, they seem like they're really kind of combining those those acronyms and those those products together. Others are kind of, you know, maybe not quite so bringing them together, kind of, you know, working on them separately. Uh, I guess what's from from Brocade's point of view, what's the kind of the connection? How important uh, is SDN for NFV, and, and how inter how integral are those are those two going to be, kind of going forward, you know, for for telecom operators? Um, so we definitely see um, the importance of NFV and SDN. 
we do see them as as two separate uh, yet intertwined uh, things. Um, NFV network function virtualization. Um, uh, and SDN are sort of the parallel between the the two sort of open source projects that we're heavily involved with. That being OpenStack, uh, being in the orchestration space, uh, and uh, and uh, Open Daylight in the SDN controller space, network control, uh, network controller space. Um, and in fact, those are also two great analogies for how we separate uh, the universe of of these two things. Uh, orchestration is squarely in the open stack space uh, mm -hmm. up top, um, and then that is connected to the uh, sort of detailed low-level network config and management operation of the SDN controller, uh, which is in the uh, purview of open daylight these days. Uh, the two are, again, linked uh, intimately, um, um, you know, simply because you, you do need both of these things uh, to actually operate a, a production uh, network, a modern production network, where you have, um, you know, millions of virtualized elements being provisioned, repositioned, moved around, um, and then connected uh, together uh, in different ways, uh, both in multi-tenant uh, configurations um, and then just as uh, sort of virtualized network infrastructure. Got it. Got it. Okay, makes sense. That makes sense. Now, uh, you know, you kind of mentioned the open daylight part of this. Uh, I know that was part of the announcement as well. Uh, how important has it been to kind of work through that project? Um, I mean, obviously, it does seem like you know being able to kind of have uh, several companies working together on a common platform seems to be you know the way to advance uh, SDN probably you know a, a, as a cohesive unit. Uh, how important was is it working through the open daylight project on on this product for you guys? Well, uh, if I take a step back. Um, kind of back to the original discussion about Brocade itself. I mean, Brocade has been a company that has, um, uh, you know, evolved its DNA from the inside out. Um, starting, I think, last fall, there was a, a decision right from the top. Lloyd and Ken Chang decided, look, we're going to go open source uh, as a key part of our strategy. And the company has been evolving from the inside out uh, based on that. Um, so, so to that end, uh, Open Daylight is a is a critical um, critical component of that uh, strategy, um, and it has become a critical part of our infrastructure. Um, working on that, so to that end, uh, you've seen you know Brocade's heavy investment uh, in that project in that product, not only as a platinum sponsor of the of the uh, of the project, mm -hmm. but also. Um, with our continued involvement <clears throat> uh, in terms of development resources. Got it. Uh, does, does, I mean, does it seem like that the industry itself is working pretty well together on this? Because, uh, you know, again, some of these newer technologies, when, when they come out, you know, you always seem to get uh, a company, whether large or small, uh, perhaps do, doing a lot of uh, proprietary uh, uh, technology on this, and that seems to, you know, at times, you know, fracture the, the development of these things. Uh, does it seem like the industry in general is working pretty well together on 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 kind of the standards and working through open daylight? Yeah, I think I, I think the industry has come together around this project uh, in a large way. I mean, there there are some outliers that are um, sort of not genuinely involved and you know sort of dancing around the edge or still still sort of watching to to wait for the thing to crash and burn. Sure. <laughs> Although those are you know those are shrinking by the day. You know. Um, you know, there were a year ago. Uh, I think if you had if you had uh, asked people about this, you know, the answer I think would have been different. I mean, mm -hmm. there were in fact a lot of companies kind of standing around the outside, going, "Hmm, I don't know how this thing's going to work out." Um, you know, I, I was actually one of the people early on who really believed in this thing, and I'm I'm really ecstatic to see this thing, um, you know, uh, lifting off the way it has been. I think uh, I think this project is crucial for the industry. For the networking industry, um, in 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 a sense, to find relevance in the in the sort of modern uh, reference of of you know hyperscale virtualization architecture, um, having more and more proprietary controllers uh, that were narrowly focused, I mm -hmm. think was really missing the target, and I think still do miss the target. Um, whereas um, you know more widely applicable uh, controller architectures like Open Daylight. Um, um, uh, are, are really are really uh, uh, are really the way to go, and I think you see that's not just my opinion. I mean, you see lots of of, of big big companies now rallying behind this: uh, HP, Cisco, IBM, 
uh, Erickson, uh, you know, a variety of guys, uh, you know, who who are who have a lot of a lot a lot at stake uh, getting behind this project, and not just getting behind it sort of verbally, but getting behind it financially with you know developer resources. So so we feel really good about um, you know our our approach here. Got it. I guess it seems like too it's pretty important for uh, you know to get to get the big telecom operators, wireless operators. Uh, to kind of buy into this as well. It seems like that's important because traditionally they are very conservative companies who are very hardware-based companies, and so they have a certain way of doing things. And you know, they're not just going to kind of go down these routes if there's not, uh, you know, kind of an end game or, or, or they, they can't see the the finish line for these things. So it seems like to, to get them on board, that's pretty important to make sure that everybody's kind of coming together with something that is uh, going to have some support, or a lot of support, uh, and going to be able to really be used and be be reliable, obviously too. Yeah, I think. That is crucially important for these guys um, because I think a lot of network operators have realized that um, the SDN controller um, plus the orchestration component uh, represent probably not the totality but a large portion of what actually will become eventually become their OSS mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. so um, you know relying on a single vendor that that has a very you know has one of those sort of hidden, you know, let's buy all my hardware situations is probably not cool, right? Um, so, you know, there's that element. And then there's also um, what I'm finding uh, with several tier one uh, telcos that we're uh, working with right now is there's this, there's actually a, a realization on their part, too, that the this sort of modern software development paradigm is really where they need to get to, to uh, uh, develop and deploy services. Uh, they can't wait for three years to deploy a service anymore because they're going to get run over by an over-the-top place. And so, um, you know, we've we've made remarkable traction with um, uh, several Tier 1 telcos now, uh, one in particular um, where we're closing in on, um, where we've gone start to finish in literally a couple of months, where we've gone, you know, you know, going in, starting to do trials, and 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 get get going. I mean, there's no longer this you know year long process of gathering requirements, and then you know, uh, sitting around you know doing trial after trial after trial. I mean, these guys are you know they're, they're ready to go, um, and and they and they see the value in that. So yeah, yeah. We're, we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, and it does seem like too. I mean, just you know, going to some of the operators and, and talking with them, and going to some trade shows, it does seem like that the uh, the telcos, the big tier ones at least, have got uh, much bigger uh, and more support for kind of this, these software initiatives uh, going on inside mm -hmm. the company too. I mean, it seems like you know maybe a year ago there were a few people it seemed like who were kind of focused on this, but now you know they've got whole whole teams working on this, and it seems like they're 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 definitely getting more behind it, and and seem like they're that's probably making it easier for you guys to then go in there and work with them because they already have teams established. Right. We know what you're talking about, first of all, which obviously helps out, but uh, we're kind of working yeah. on these processes as well, it seems. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think if you look, like, for example, the public announcement that Telefonica made a couple of weeks ago, I mean, that's a company that, you know, is a great example of, of what you're describing. I mean, those guys are in with both feet. Um, they see not only the cost savings in, in accelerating and being agile uh, in this process, um, but also the the potential to make money, to be the first to market, to be the best to market, um, and 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 this you know this whole new software uh, paradigm that's in virtualization uh, really you know goes hand in hand with that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, that telefon Telefonica deal is pretty big. AT and T has been pretty aggressive. It seems like with their their domain mm -hmm. initiative too. So yeah, it does seem like the carriers are getting involved. Well, I guess maybe looking you know looking like six, 12, 18 <laughs> months on this, you know, how do you see uh, the deployment, the adoption? Uh, of more SDN into these networks. Obviously, it seems like carriers right now are kind of doing little bits and pieces, you know, trying to, you know, make sure this is reliable, make sure it works with their network okay. Um, do, do you kind of just see this continuing to grow inside the network, or how do you see, I guess, the evolution of, of, of SDN and, and NFV kind of uh, rolling out across across the telecom and, and, the, and the wireless space? Well, I, I, I first see this as um, starting out, uh, well, I, I originally started I originally saw this as starting out a lot slower than it would be, <laughs> but we're seeing um, sort of rapid traction in a lot of areas around this, um, and it's it's sort of blown my mind that the interest, the real interest in this, not just the you know oh let's let's play with that crash test dummy, the the real interest by uh, operators seeing the sort of monetary value in deploying this sort of thing, 
Um, and so I, I really see this sort of evolving uh, rapidly over time. I mean, right now, I, I think, again, if you go back a year ago, um, really there, there was nobody that actually wanted to deploy Open Daylight. Uh, in its first release, and 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 rightly so. I mean, it wasn't ready for prime time. It was a you know, barely a dot one release. I mean, a one point oh release, and you know, it had its warts and its issues, which actually took took us a you know a good two three months to repair. Um, and then uh, earlier on this year, uh, even early this summer, a lot of folks were spending a lot of time sort of shoring up the infrastructure, making things scalable. Um, and fixing things, and and frankly, we still have a ways to go in that regard too. Although I think we're we're at the point where this thing is a um, a prime time in a prime time shape. Um, you know, we're testing it. We've tested it internally. We're using this um, quite extensively, and and I think I think it's ready now to to start being deployed. And and of course, it's a work in progress, and and that's what the community is is rallying around. Um, and, and, and so it will continue to evolve. And I think there's key areas like policy, uh, network resource control, um, I, 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 not just policy, but group-based policy, um, additional uh, scalability uh, functionality that will go in. Um, there were a number of projects that just, uh, other projects that just didn't make the cut by the end of the, of the uh, cutoff. I think those guys will, will start um, uh, jumping in as well. Um, and then on top of that, you know, that sort of fine open source base, you know, Brocade, my team is, is spending uh, lots of time and effort building uh, additional applications and infrastructure and deployment strategies around this, uh, this very capable base. Um, and and I, I really see a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of sort of, uh, well, we, we, we had a code name for the project called Sunshine internally. And uh, really see a lot of uh, bright sunshine in the future here for this thing. Yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. You're right. I mean, you know, again, like you said, a year ago uh, there was very little talk of this, and now it does seem like the past six months it's really g gained some momentum, some steam. And uh, like you said, it's it's been amazing how how rapidly uh, operators have been kind of embracing this. And again, it is something that's so new for them too. But for them to embrace it this rapidly, obviously they're seeing uh, the potential for this. And like you said, the over the top stuff coming on and and the faster data networks is, is making this really a uh, you know a way to kind of tap in and monetize what they've got out there. So, um, it's like a big move for them. Yeah, exactly. I, I think a lot of guys have, have been sort of standing on the sideline watching the Googles and Facebooks and you know et cetera, and going you know scratching their head, going, "Geez, there's there's got to be a way I can get into this." And and this is really um, you know one of those things. This plus OpenStack um, is is a is a you know a viable Alternative to VMware, for example, mm -hmm. um, and is a is a much more um, attractive cost-wise solution for these guys to uh, to go to market. And so I think they're they're really seeing the opportunity, and you know they really want to grasp that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Well, hey, Tom, we definitely appreciate the insight today, and and uh, again, thanks so much for all the information on this. And uh, again, as this market evolves, I'm sure we'll be touching base again soon. I'm sure you guys will be pretty busy there at Brocade, uh, coming out more solutions. But uh, again, we appreciate the time and insight today. Yeah, we're very busy, but uh, we appreciate the time. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, I'll let you get back to work there then. I definitely appreciate it. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Right, bye.